Father, the transfigured Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I pray that grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ will be with you all. Welcome again to Groomsport Parish Church and today we have a service for Holy Communion as we mark the transfiguration of our Lord Jesus. We're very lucky in this church because the great window above our holy table is a depiction of the transfiguration of Christ. We'll hear more about that in a moment when Joan reads our Gospel reading. It's one of my favourite feast days in the church because it's that time when we see Christ as he truly is, the Son of God, Son of Man. And it is a service of Holy Communion, so you might want to pop out and get yourself a small glass of wine and a little piece of bread, so with me you can share in the Lord's Supper. Wherever you are this morning, you are all very welcome, and we join our prayers together here in this service, but also with our friends in our church halls who will also today be worshipping together with us. A prayer for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. In this place we remember that God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Because of the cost of God's love and forgiveness, let us confess our failings and our sin. Let us do so in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and in peace with all people. We pray together, Almighty God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And I pray, Almighty God, who forgives all those who truly repent, I pray, loving God, that you will have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. I pray, loving God, that you will confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life, because the prayer is made through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect, the special prayer for the Feast of the Transfiguration. Father in heaven, whose Son Jesus Christ was wonderfully transfigured before chosen witnesses upon the holy mountain and spoke of the exodus he would accomplish at Jerusalem. Loving Father, give us strength so to hear his voice and bear our cross in this world, that in the world to come we may see him as he truly is, where he is alive and reigns with you, Father, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St Luke, chapter 9, beginning at the 28th verse. Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent and in those days told no one any of the things that they had seen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thank you, Jen. Uh, our window tells the story of the Transfiguration. You can see Jesus in glory, uh, transfigured, uh, with Moses and Elijah either side of him, and cowering at his feet. Peter, James and John. It was a startling sight for Peter, James and John. And I know that there are those people who say it's a legend, it's a fable, it's a myth, or they were dreaming. Peter writes to his friends in one of his letters in the New Testament telling us he was there. He was there, a bit like Max Boyce was there when Wales crushed England every year during the 70s at the Arms Park and at Twickenham. Jesus stands there dazzlingly white, we, the Gospels tell us, dazzling, so white. The Gospel writers tell us that his clothes were so bright, no, no launderer, no washer person, no fuller in biblical terms on earth can make them any whiter. He is dazzling. Peter, James and John see him for who he truly is. Fuller. A fuller, today we use fuller's earth for all kinds of things. It's a kind of chalky substance and it reminds me that fuller's earth is used to dust down soldiers and sailors and airmen after a nuclear attack. It absorbs as best it can uh, the radiation from a nuclear bomb. And it's interesting to note that the Feast of the Transfiguration, the 6th of August, last Thursday, is the anniversary of the explosion of the atomic bomb above Hiroshima in 1945. And it strikes me as a very strange juxtaposition of God's ways and human ways. God shows his glory in the person of his son Christ Jesus on a remote mountain top in front of three rather Hicksville witnesses, Peter, James and John. And we know that Peter probably wasn't at first sight the sharpest knife in the box, but God shows himself, reveals himself in this glorious vision of Jesus in all his divine majesty, quietly, humbly, in all humility. Humankind, of course, has to blow itself up. It has to explode an atomic bomb. It now has enough nuclear warheads to blow the earth to smithereens many, many, many times over. Why? Why? I just think it's a wonderful juxtaposition of man's arrogance, man's greed, his aggrandizement, if you like, in the face of the humility of a God who created the universe, a God who, at the snapping of his fingers, could wipe out the whole of creation, but chooses not to. And why doesn't he, despite all our failings, despite our ignorance, despite our sin, despite our 
refusal to acknowledge that there is a God who is in control of all things. God does not use his power to destroy us for the simple reason that he loves us. He loves us. When we get cross, angry, furious with our children, we don't go and beat them about the head or kick them out the front door and say, never darken my door again. No, uh, however cross we might be, we still love them and care for them. The 6th of August, the Feast of the Transfiguration, God's power revealed in the face of a simple man from Galilee. The 6th of August, a witness to man's inhumanity to man. Many, many years ago, the church wanted to try and sum up what it is we believed in, and they came up with a formula of words which we call the Nicene Creed. It's longer than the creed we've been using in recent weeks, but it is an important statement of our faith, and we say it together now. We believe. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
wherever you are, I'd ask you now to join me in prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, hear the prayers which we offer in faith and love. Loving Father, it is not for all of us to see a vision of your transfigured Son, but we pray for faith to see him as he truly is, to serve him as he truly deserves, and to follow him in his ministry and pilgrimage of love. Father, we pray for peace and for your salvation to be known throughout the world, a world bristling with nuclear weapons, a world where humankind can destroy itself over so many times. We today pray for peace, for understanding between the nations of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This holy day, Father, we pray for the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, and we yearn for that time when all people who call themselves Christian might be united, not necessarily in what they do or what they believe in, but in the fundamentals that we might accept one another, be kind to one another, and show the world what one billion people together can do to bring peace and justice into your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who serve and lead in your church. We pray for John, our Archbishop, and David, our Bishop. Here in this place, we pray for Gary and Kenneth, our church wardens, and for all members of our select vestry. In this province, we pray for all churches and all those who lead the various churches and parishes and chapels. We pray for those, be they Catholic, Protestant, Presbyterian brethren. May the church in this province be a blessing to this province and strengthen the cause of peace here in Northern Ireland. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as the church seems to be sidelined in some communities, we do pray for those who are holding fast to the faith, growing in the faith of Christ, and passing that faith on to generations yet to come. As we celebrate this wonderful Feast of the Transfiguration, we pray that in 2,000 years' time, the people will still be acknowledging Jesus Christ as Lord, and Father, your kingship over all creation. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for all who live and work in our local communities. Here we pray for the parish and the village of Groomsport. Here on the edge of Belfast Loch and the Irish Sea. We pray for the ferries and the container ships and the tankers that pass this church every day. We pray for their crews and their families living far away. We pray for our own families, our own loved ones. And Father, we pray for those we've fallen out with, that we might by your grace be reconciled to them and them to us. And especially today, we pray for those who live alone. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick in body or in mind. We pray for Jimmy, who has had a pacemaker fitted. For Warren, struggling with the deep blackness of depression and mental illness. We pray for Gregor. We do pray, loving Father, for those who are struggling with COVID-19 and those who are recovering from that dreadful illness. And here in this place, we remember faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And on this day, this holy day, when we celebrate the Transfiguration, we do pray for all those who hold authority. We pray your blessing on our Elizabeth, our Queen, and those who have responsibility under her for the government of our land. And our hearts go out to those who are working tirelessly for peace, justice and righteousness in our country and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and merciful God, who in days of old didst give to this land the benediction of thy holy church, withdraw not, we pray thee, thy favour from us, but so correct what is amiss and supply what is lacking, that we may more and more bring forth fruit to thy glory. And so, loving Father, rejoicing in the fellowship of your holy apostles, martyrs and saints, and of all your servants departed this life in your faith and fear. This day we commend ourselves with them and one another, wherever we are, to you, loving Lord God. And as all our prayers, these things we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Be present. Be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen, transfigured High Priest, and make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. Here in this holy place we acknowledge that the Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, almighty and ever-living God, at all times and in all places, it is right for us to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose divine glory shone forth upon the holy mountain before chosen witnesses of his majesty, when your own voice from heaven proclaimed him your beloved Son. So, loving Father, with all your people, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name for ever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Father, the creator and the sustainer of all things. You made us in your own image, male and female, you created us. And even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and your mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and to suffer death upon the cross to redeem each and every one of us. And there upon the cross he made the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. For he instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until he comes again. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, loving Father, with this bread and with this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and his death. We celebrate his resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Loving Father, it is our prayer that you will accept through him our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, we pray that you will grant by the power of your holy and life-giving Spirit that we may be made one in your holy Church and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him. All these things, Father, we pray through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, 
for ever and ever. Amen. And as our loving Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. This bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body for we all share in the one bread. And wherever we are, let us draw near with faith to receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for us, and his blood shed for us. Let us eat and drink in remembrance that Christ was transfigured, died and rose again for love of each one of us. And because of all these things, let us feed on him in our hearts, by faith and with thanksgiving. Amen. Holy God, we see your glory in the face of Christ Jesus our Lord. May we who are partakers of his body and his blood reflect his life in word and deed, that all the world may come to know his power to change and to save. Holy God, this we ask through Jesus Christ, our transfigured Lord. Amen. And Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. 
send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and your glory. Amen. And wherever you are today, thank you for joining us here in Greensport Parish Church. And I pray that the God of all grace, who has called us to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus our Lord, may that God of all grace establish, strengthen and settle us, each one of us, in the faith of Christ our transfigured Lord. And I pray that the blessing of that same God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, I pray the blessing of God will be with you and those you love, those you care for, those you pray for. God's blessing be with you and them today, tomorrow and forever. Amen. And wherever we are, let us go in peace to love and serve our Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.